Raj Grubbin, and uh, they're working on this house right across the street, and they're, they're putting in a septic tank, and they they have to dig a huge hole. And uh, this guy's got a, you know, a excavator, like a backhoe with a big bucket thing, but it's on the front, so maybe it's a front hoe. Anyway, it's odd. This guy has got a shovel and he's cleaning the treads of the, of the, you know, the tractor treads, I guess. But it's in the dirt. So aren't they just going to get dirty again? He's been working on it for like 20 minutes. No, he's back to, he's back in and now he's digging the hole again. Anyway, it's irrelevant, but it's uh, my life right now as I rub in the garage. Today, we have a recipe that I guarantee will blow your minds. I have struggled for years in trying to break the magic code of how to chick, how to chick, how to cook a chicken breast. Every time I've done it, and I've gone through many, many practice sessions with chicken breast, skinless, boneless, by the way, I'm always left disappointed. They always come up kind of dryish and toughish. And finally, discovered uh, through the uh, guidance of my dear wife about a year ago um, her secret recipe and I don't know why she held out for 10 years but um, here comes the here comes the backhoe okay we're gonna take a break and uh, I guess they're done get to doing some cooking okay it's gonna be good you get split chicken breast bone in skin on it and then we do a trick we do the trick the man with the backhoe is gone, and thankfully, it's quiet. Peace until the next subcontractor comes. They have all the shingles ready to go on, the house, and that is going to be, it sounds like a machine gun for about 24 hours. The other thing about this recipe that's insane, it, it's insane, is there are only three ingredients three ingredients. It's the simplest chicken recipe you'll ever make, and it's gonna be the best chicken breast you ever had. Juicy and tender and flavorful. Okay, let's get to work. We're gonna use my favorite implement, the toaster oven pan. This is going to be a toaster oven roasted, bone-in split chicken breast, rubbed. And we're gonna rub the chicken, and we're gonna wrap it up tight in a freezer bag and we're going to put it in the fridge for overnight now you don't have to do overnight but we're going to do overnight because what's the rush i mean there's no rush not here not in my life and then we'll get down to really the hard part which is uh putting it in the pan on a bed and this is the trick this is the trick on a bed of onions onions that's it onions chicken is number one ingredient rub is number two ingredient onions are number three ingredient that's it it's fun it's simple you cannot screw this up unless you massively overcook it and that'll be the only tricky part of the recipe so we're going to get the chicken going. I'm going to show you how I rub it, wrap it, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, grubbers. Time to get the chicken prepped. And we have here, as you can see, it's a split breast with ribs. So it's bone in, and you can see the yellow skin. So it's skin on, bone in. This is magic. you got to have the elements. The skin gives you fat and moisture, and the bones also provide flavor. So, bone in, skin on, end of story. We're gonna rub it, and we're gonna put it in a plastic bag overnight. I do it overnight because I got the time to wait, why not? And I think it enhances the flavor, I really do. Rub it with anything you want. There's thousands of rubs, you probably have your favorites. My favorite, just so you know, uh, is, um, I call it my secret blend, but it's not really a secret. Um, I take these two 
rubs, I guess, seasonings. One's Weber roasted garlic and herb, and the other is McCormick rotisserie chicken, perfect pinch. This, if you look at the coloration, this is a lot of paprika. This is a lot of garlic. They get married and it's pretty. And then when I mix them together, 50-50, I come up with my chicken rub. And it's a secret recipe, as you can see right here. Don't tell anybody. Okay, grubbers, it's time to rub some chicken. So we got the breast here, I patted it dry, though it wasn't very wet. Um, I want to show you what's uh, something very important here. The skin, the skin is on. So what you want to do is reach your finger underneath and kind of pe peel your finger underneath, slide it along, and slowly pull away the chicken skin from the breast. And after, it's pretty easy. And chicken skin's tough, pretty tough. It's not like you're going to tear it, but don't be, don't manhandle the bird, you know. Um, and then you're going to have sea fresh meat right there. And that's important because we're going to take our chicken rub, secret recipe, and we're going to just pour it on, pour it on. You know, be, be a generous, be generous. Okay, now once that's done, what do we do? We just pull that skin back. So we've tucked it in. Let me get a paper towel here. Okay, so we've tucked it in, and now we're gonna do the same thing up top. I'm trying to keep this from going all over my garage floor, and then I have to sweep. That's no fun. Okay, gotcha. Flip it. Flip it. And I'm gonna do something tricky here. I'm not gonna waste the rub. I'm gonna put that there and come back. The other thing you can notice is that we've got a, a seam here. I, I don't know what the what that is. It's like a little mouth, you know, opening up. But we're gonna do the same thing here in that fold, okay? Yeah. Bingo, okay, bingo. Now, you know, me and my spray oil, I don't know what it is about this, but you know, I wanna just give it a little moisture. I don't know why, but I just do it. Just, you don't have to do it, I just, I just do it. Okay, and that is ready literally for the bag. Let's bag it. This is a quart bag, and, and what I do is I, I do one, I do them separately because it's a lot of chicken. These are large uh, breasts, so I, I, um, I don't pack them up together, I, I do them separately. I, I think I don't need to tell you this, it's kind of obvious. So now what we do, we grab this bag. Now, if you had wanted to do them all, you certainly could. You just use a one gallon bag and just work this thing in. Okay, just like that. Where's my paper towel? I lost my, there you go. And press it, you know, try to get the air out as much as you can. And then just zipper. Okay, so this is gonna go in the fridge. Now, if I did, I'm gonna do the other one as well, because I have, you know, I have number two here, um, and number two is going to go in the freezer after I do the same same rub method. Okay, so now you had to do that. It's not complicated. Welcome back, grubbers. Well, we bagged our chicken yesterday. I changed, and we're going to oh, this is like flotsam. Uh, we're going to bring in that second critical ingredient. The onion. We have our pan. We're gonna slice the onion. A little oil always, spray oil. Lay out the sliced onion in the pan. And then we're gonna plop our chicken breast right on top of the onion. Then we're gonna roast it in the toaster oven for about 25 minutes. Now give or take, always depending on the size of the breast, your type of toaster oven, temperatures may vary. Uh, and we'll probe it and of course. 165 chicken is chicken uh, we'll pull it out and I predict it's gonna be once again super moist and super tender and based on our rub the secret recipe that I deploy very very flavorful okay we're gonna do a little oiling of the pan okay now bingo Onion, beautiful. Red onion, and you can use white onion, you can use yellow onion. 
any onion will do. And by the way, uh, just Sam, this is nothing more than using a bed of watery rich vegetables in the pan. This doesn't have to be onion, though onion is outstanding because not only does it impart the liquid, the moisture that we need to help with the uh, moisture in the finished uh, chicken, but it also um, creates a nice flavor because who doesn't like grilled onions, right? You could use bell peppers, sweet or green. You could use onion with celery, you could use just celery. Or think about all the other vegetables out there, not cucumber, not zucchini, because they disintegrate, but all the other vegetables that have moisture, that are moisture rich. Uh, I haven't tried broccoli and cauliflower, but I don't know why they wouldn't work as well. So let's slice the onion. And the slices aren't gonna be super thin, though, you know, you could probably dice them you could probably cut them super thin, but I'm gonna to try to cut about four or five rounds out of this uh, medium-sized onion and then lay them in the pan. So we'll see how we do here. And I'm not gonna drag you through the whole boring process of cutting an onion. So uh, we'll be uh, right back. Okay, the onion has been sliced and we're going to uh, put my dagger away and get some of this excess dry skin off it's yeah it's not a big deal but we are going to eat it so let's get yeah that's it i thought there was an extra one in there so what i'm going to do I'm just kind of falling apart on me what's going on here once these come out they're hard to get back i think i did a pretty good job so as you can see we're just going to put it in the pan and uh, bear with me i hate to waste your time with the tedium of prep but I don't know. I, I don't, my hands are, have onion juice on them, so I can't manipulate the camera right now. I don't know why that guy's sticking up. It's not going to hurt anything. Probably came from another onion. So we're just going to layer these on. Almost finished. Bear with me. I can edit this a little bit. Um, two more. And uh, bingo. And then the last one. Okay, here we go. So now we have a bed of onion. Okay. And it's, it's a little topsy-turvy, but again, that doesn't really matter. That doesn't matter. Chicken, the chicken breast really doesn't care because, in fact, the chicken breast really doesn't know what's happening to said breast. So, here we have it. Chicken breast. That's it. Isn't that beautiful? Let me wipe my hands here. And for those who think I never clean my hands and I, it, it's really grubby out here while we garage grub it's not true i i wash them all the time i'm constantly using this uh antibacterial cleaner it kills uh bacteria viruses up to uh i don't know i thought it was 99 percent. anyway my hands are clean in all the years that i've been cooking i have never ever gotten food poisoning the only time i ever had fused food poisoning is when i went to a restaurant and the roasted toasted baked turkey sandwich was bad and that was a bad scene so in any event here we have it now what i'm going to do as, as, as a final shot here is give it a final shot with my favorite thing spray oil do it don't do it doesn't matter i don't know i think it helps so that's what we have and what we're going to do now is put it in our preheated toaster oven at 400 degrees and in 25 minutes give or take five it'll be ready. So at about 20, I'll get my probe out, check it, and you know, make sure we're, we're there. And at 165 or 160, because it continues to cook a little bit, especially in the center portion, obviously the thinner cooks faster. And that's the, you know, they ought to do chicken breast, different shape. They ought to make them more uniform, in my opinion. So they cook evenly, but we'll pull it off around 160 and uh, let it rest for 10 minutes and then dig in. But that's later, it's early yet. And, uh, oh, I got a little piece of onion here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on top. What do you think of that? It's kind of art, art, artful. Okay, enough of this. We'll be back a little bit later. It might be uh, dusk. It might be a little darker out because it's, uh, it's only 4 in the afternoon, and we're not going to eat at 4. The grubbers, we're back. The oven is preheated, our toaster oven, to 400 degrees. 
and uh, we're going to slide this beautiful, beautiful chicken breast, which has been rubbed and uh, laid on a bed of fresh onion into the oven. And I'm going to check it in 20 minutes and see how we're doing. Okay, grubbers, it's been uh, about 20 minutes, actually exactly 20 minutes, and we're going to pull our chicken out of the toaster oven and see how we're doing. We're going to take its temperature. Well, it looks pretty, but that doesn't mean anything. We have to do the old probe. So we're going to probe it. We're going to probe the thickest part twice. We aren't even close. I'm going to give it another... It's coming in 1, 113, 115 in the thick part, 123. Yeah, I'm going to give it another 8 minutes. Uh, it's, and this is a judgment thing. At this point, it's all about, I hate to say it, experience. Okay, we're back again, and I think we're close here, so let's give it a shot. See, you can see it's starting to look interesting. Let's see how we're doing on the temp. It's all about the temp here. The probe. One thing about these probes, you got to be aware of the instant on. The instant on means they instantly check the temperature. So that means right as you touch it, it's giving you a temperature. And that's why when you, sometimes you touch it, the temperature is not done. And yet when you push it in, uh -huh, it changes dramatically. So keep that in mind. That's why you do multiple probes, multiple probes. Getting really close here. Yeah, I'm going to give it, here's what I'm going to do based on experience with these chicken breasts, I'm gonna give it another five minutes, okay? But here's the other test. Look at the onions. See how the onions are getting? Uh, see, they're getting done. Going back in, give it another five. Grubbers, if you could smell, you could smell it in this garage right now. Oh. I'm surprised that coyotes and bobcats haven't showed up at the door. Um, it's, oh, I have the best smelling garage in town. There's no question about it. Anyway, the chicken's ready. We're bringing it out. We'll see how we're doing this bird. It looks beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Mm -mm -mm. Let me give it a quick probe, but I don't, I don't really need to because I know it's finished. I know it's finished. Oh yeah, we're there. Oh, it's trying to get away from me. Oh yeah, we're done. Oh yeah, beautiful. Slice into it and, and see how we're doing here. Mm -mm -mm. I'm spinning around with my bamboo skewer. And you know, me and my oil, I don't know what it is, but I just like to finish everything with a little little shot. It's probably just aesthetic, so I don't look at this little guy. He he's still oh still standing. Well until I've knocked him down. This is just for effect. I never do this, but this is just for effect. There you go. There you go. So let's slice off a piece and see how we're doing here. Slide over onion. We're coming in with a knife. There, you hang out there for a minute. I know you can see that. It is absolutely gorgeous. Just like I promised and tender and juicy. Can you see the, the beautifulness of this piece of chicken here? You see that? I'm trying to skew it around. There we go. What do you think? Is that beautiful? Well, <laughs> I wish you could taste it, and I'm going to taste it in a moment. Well, in the end, it's all about taste, so we're going to taste it. See how we did. Oh, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to grab a little onion. It fell off the chicken, so. I'm going to try it with the, the actual chicken itself. Oh, my. Oh, I mean, 
you have got to be kidding me. One more, just to be sure that wasn't a, like a, you know, a fake piece or, uh, you know, an imposter piece of chicken. Let's see. Can you see that? Well, I hope you can. Wish you could taste it. Oh, you must be kidding. That is, like I said, the most tender, moist, flavorful chicken I've had since last week when I did this. Rubbers, get out there. Get your chicken breast. Remember, skin on, bone in. Marinate them. Not marinate them. Rub them. Rub them and wrap them. Rub them and wrap them. Any rub you want. Put them in the fridge. You know, relax, chill out. Give it 24 hours. Don't rush, never rush the process. Pull that thing out, lay it on a bed of vegetables, any vegetables that have moisture, which is pretty much every vegetable, whatever you like. Brussels sprouts, I don't know. 400 degrees, 25 minutes, start there. Get your probe, where's my probe? Get your probe so you can check that it's 160-ish. Pull it out, let it rest a few minutes. Tonight, I'm gonna to put this on a bed of rice. My dear wife is going to put hers on a bed of salad, which is great. We're gonna be happy. So, thanks for joining, and uh, Garage Grub will be back real soon with another enticing episode, guarantee it. Adios.